So I'll do it, guys. So I'll do it, Candyman, in the mirror. Yeah, go on, let's do it. Candyman. 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 Hi everyone and welcome to day 11 of my 31 days of horror and today, just this morning, I managed to get in the film Candyman. Not Candyman 2 and not Candyman 3. Yes, I've got all three films basically. Uh, Candyman 1, 2 and 3. Um, what can I say really? Candyman, excellent, excellent little horror movie. Candyman 2, yeah it's watchable, it's not so bad. Candyman 3, complete waste of time, and possibly, I'd, I don't even know why they bothered with that. Probably the worst of the lot. Candyman 2, as I said, very watchable, it's alright. But Candyman, let's talk about Candyman. Have you ever heard of Candyman? And if you look in the mirror, and you say his name five times. In cities everywhere. Candyman? They whisper his name. Right. Candyman. It's just a story. Candyman. Candyman. Just a ghost story. Candyman. An entire community starts attributing the daily horrors of their lives to a mythical figure. The legend first appeared in 1890. He was attacked, mutilated, and burned to death. Poor Candyman. Helen, a woman died in there. Leave it. Everyone knows he isn't real. That's modern oral folklore. Everyone. Except Helen Lyle. Bernadette! It ain't safe around here. That don't scare too easy. Wanna know about Ruthie Jane? They ain't never gonna catch him. Who? Candyman. She is about to discover. Helen, get out! Get out! What's behind the mystery? I'm sick. What's behind the legend? Listen, he's under the bed! And most terrifying of all, come with me. What's behind the mirror? He's here. Man, you don't have to believe. Just beware. So, Candyman came out in 1993 and it's based on a short story by Clive Barker. I think it's called The Forbidden. And it tells a tale of Daniel Rob, Robbie Tail or Rob Tail, who is a slave working for this white farmer and his family. He ends up falling in love with the farmer's daughter, but because he's a slave, it's a big no-no in them times. And what happens is the farmer and his cronies get together, they abduct Daniel, and basically they, they murder him. They chop off his right hand and they put a rusty stump, a rusty hook into his stump, if you will, and they cover his body in honey and throw him into a swarm of bees. And that is the folklore of Canaan, that's how he dies. But apparently, if you say his name five times in a mirror, he will come and get you. Now, the film itself, Candyman, it stars Virginia Masden, who, she's an a adult learner, if you will, an adult student, and she goes to look into the myth of the so-called Candyman. She hears these stories that are coming out of Cabrini Green, and Cabrini Green is like a, a far-out place in Chicago where it's run by all these black gangs, black youths, as well as white youths and white gangs, but predominantly, it's like a black ghetto area of Chicago and she doesn't want to be seen there, but she's interested and intrigued in the story of the Candyman. The, the folklore, the legend, the mythology, if you will, the urban legend. So she, off she goes with her and a friend, and they go to do this thesis, this, this story on the Candyman. Now, obviously, she encounters a lot of problems along the way. You know, a white woman in a black neighborhood, she gets threatened, she gets beaten up, but slowly and surely, she becomes infatuated with this story. And it's not long before Candyman, or Tony Todd, 
he starts to show himself to Helen. And there's a few murders along where I won't, I won't, I'll, I'll, I'll be blunt about it. It's, it's quite gory. Um, I don't want to give too much away, guys, because again, these reviews aren't going to be spoilers when it comes to nitty gritty. So you've got to go out and watch it. But there's a few murders along the way, and Helen becomes part of these these crimes. The police become suspicious. They think she's a main suspect because she's always around where these bloody murders take place. Obviously, it's Candyman who's doing them, but she can't convince the authorities otherwise. And even her boyfriend, who's a professor or is a school teacher at the same school she she's attending, um, even he starts having suspicions. She thinks he thinks she's going slightly mad and getting too involved with the Candyman murders. But yeah, the Candyman. It's it, it's a good film in that. It's a typical urban legend. We've all done it. We've all stood at the mirror and we've all said Bloody Mary or Candyman. Um, but we've all, you know, how many of you stopped before you say it five times? Because it's not thinking to yourself, well, these things don't happen. It's what happens if it could happen. What happens if you say his name five times and something that evening did happen? It, it, it's a creepiness factor. And that's because it's how it's written, how well written it is by Clive Barker. And the imagery that he gives us. It's the same with Hellraisers. Even though we know the make believe, it takes us to a dark place where we don't want to be there. And Candyman's exactly the same. It's, a, it's the creepiness that Clive Barker puts into his, the words, the phrases, the imagery. Like I said, Cabrini Green on its own. Just the name Cabrini Green. It conjures up eerie and gothic and scary locations. And that's what we see in Candyman. Um, there's a lot of dark corridors, if you will, in some aspects of Candyman. When Helen and a friend go taking photographs, they, they break through this wall and they end up in this little apartment. And in the background is the big like graffiti, a big picture of Candyman's face. And they've come out of the, where his mouth would be. But it's eerie, it's gothic in style, and it works really well. Now, Candyman himself, the clothes he wears, a long sheepskin coat, if you will, with, with fur around it. He's got this hook in his right hand, you know, and he's, it's, it's impaled into his stump. It's rusty, it's bloody, you know. And then you've got Candyman himself, Tony Todd, with that elegant voice and deep undertone in his voice. And every time he calls for Helen, it's done in a dreamy way. I don't think they could have got a better character or a better actor to play the character, I should say, of Candyman. Tony Todd's fantastic for this film. And again, because of his voice, because of his looks. He doesn't look a murderer at times. He just looks like a, a normal guy who, you know, he's friendly, he's approachable. But obviously we know he's got these serious undertones, especially when he's got a hook in his hand or in his stump. Now, seriously guys, Candyman, it's a good little film. I'm not going to go into too much depth about what happens to which characters because, again, I've given it away where there's plenty of murders and there's plenty of gore in this film, but it's just the overall feel you get for it. It's, it, you know, it draws you in. Now, I'll tell you a little tale, guys, and this revolves around me and my wife. Now, we weren't married at the time, but we went to the pictures one evening and we went, and I can't remember what we went to see, but it wasn't on at that time. It was on later on, but Candyman was showing. We didn't have a clue what it was about, but we, I remember joking to my wife to be at the time that I wonder if it's a horror film with a title called Candyman. Surely it's going to be something horrific. It's going to be a horror film of, of sorts. Luckily it was. We went into it completely blind and oblivious to what it was going to be about, but we loved it. It was our type of horror for that time. Again, early 90s, 1993. Um, it's not long off the, off, well, off, after the 80s. Um, so obviously you still had an 80s feel towards it with you know Hellraisers and Friday 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. It had that same kind of feel to it, but slightly more modern. 
But like I said, guys, we went into it and we didn't have a clue what it was going to be about. We were absolutely buzzing when it came out, and we, you know, we couldn't believe we were so lucky to just choose a film at random and bang, it was Candyman. And it's such a brilliant horror film. But like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail about who gets killed, how and why, because I want you guys to see it. And now, I presume most people who are watching this room will have already seen Candyman. But like I said, if you have guys, comment down below, tell me what you thought. If you haven't seen it, please go out and see it. If you've seen other movies based on Bloody Mary, again, it's the same type of vibe, if you want, same type of story. Comment down below, tell me what you thought. But it is, it's a really good film, guys. I know I'm just wittering now without trying to give too much away. But I just personally like the mythology behind it. I like the way that Cabrini Green is brought to life with such an urban legend. Because like I said, everything about it, the name Candyman, the name Cabrini Green, the actual ambient music, and I said, I say it in every video, but the music in the background, you hear piano. And it goes on like that. I'll try and play a bit without getting copyright claims if I can, but you know what I mean when you hear the music. Every scene, it's got it. And it works perfectly well for this film. It's a dreamlike film, if you will. It pulls you in, it makes you feel dreamy. It makes you feel like it's all a big dream. So Helen, until obviously she realises right at the end when, without giving anything away, we realise that it's not what it's supposed to be. Does that make any sense? Anyway, you'll have to watch it yourselves, guys, to see what it is. But basically, Candyman is my day 11, brilliant film, Tony Todd, Virginia Madsen, from the chilling imagine of Clyde Barker. It really is a good film, guys, it really is. If you've seen it, comment down below. If you haven't, go out and watch it. But as always, guys, I will say it. Thanks a lot for watching this short review. I know I don't go into too much detail with them, but if you've liked it, give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, do whatever you can, guys, to promote this uh, this channel because it's all for Bleak Coats Animal Sanctuary, 31 horror films in 31 days, trying to raise a few quid. If you can, put your hands in your pockets, dig deep. Links are down below to find their website and to find the Just Giving page. But in the meantime, guys, thanks a lot for watching this short review. I really do appreciate it. Tomorrow I've got another one for day 12. I hopefully, I think I have got a special guest. Well, I know I've got a special guest, but I'm not going to tell you who that is. You just have to come back tomorrow. But thanks a lot, guys, for watching. And as always, guys, take care. Remember to look after yourselves.